looking at Ohm's law. And Ohm's law tells us the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in electric circuits. Before we do that, though, we need to review some of the things that we should understand already. For instance, we should at this point understand what voltage is. Voltage, remember, is the potential energy between two points in an electric circuit. It is created by any difference in charge. Like the difference in charge that, that exists between the positive and negative ends of a cell, an electrical cell, electrochemical cell, a battery. Voltage, remember, is measured in volts. And voltage can actually be thought of as electrical force. As a matter of fact, in engineering circles, it is referred to as the force-like quantity in electrical systems. We also want to keep in mind that current is simply the rate at which electrons move in a conductor. It actually is the number of electrons that move through a circuit per second. Remember, it's coulombs per second. Coulombs being a group of electrons, and of course the time unit is the second. So it's measured in coulombs per second, or amperes. The current is measured in amperes. The symbol for current is an uppercase I, and the symbol for the ampere is simply an uppercase A. Electrical resistance is simply resistance to electron motion in a conductor. You can think of it as electrical friction. Resistance is measured in a unit called the ohm. The symbol for resistance is an uppercase R, while the uh, symbol for the unit ohm is this Greek letter omega. The Greek letter omega looks sort of like a horseshoe. Ohm's law states the relationship that exists between three things, voltage, current, and resistance. And we can look at this a little more closely if we look at a couple of graphs. The first graph that we see here shows the relationship between current and voltage within an electric circuit. And you can see that in this case, as the voltage in a circuit is increased, the current obviously is also going to increase. That you recognize is a direct proportion. We look at the second graph, it shows the relationship between current and resistance. And you notice that as the resistance is increased, the current actually decreases. And you recognize this downward sloping line as an inverse relationship, an inverse proportion. But we can look at that again. Here's our equation for Ohm's law. It says V equals I times R. That's voltage equals current times resistance. Voltage in volts is equal to current in amperes times resistance in ohms. The relationship between voltage, current, and resistance forms the basis for Ohm's law, which in a linear circuit states that the increase in voltage the current will also increase. When the voltage increases, the current will increase. And if we increase the resistance, the current will decrease. We can see that the current flow in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage, but is inversely proportional to the resistance. These are important things to remember. If we go back to the two graphs that we looked at previously, the first graph, remember, was current versus voltage. And what we could see in that graph was that direct proportion, that direct relationship. As the voltage increases, the current also increases. In the second graph we looked at, we could see the relationship between current and resistance. And we could clearly see that as the resistance increased, that sloping line shows us that the current decreases. Increase the resistance, decrease the current. It's actually pretty logical. An increase in resistance causes a decrease in current. Ohm's law. Here's a simple circuit. 
it consists of a single electrochemical cell, a switch, we can close that switch, and it also has a lamp, and that lamp provides a load, and that load has a resistance. The equation, remember, for Ohm's law is V equals I times R. If we place an ammeter into this circuit, and we find that when the switch is closed, there is a current of 0.2 amperes moving in this circuit. If we know that the resistance of the lamp, and this can be measured with an ohm meter, a multimeter, the resistance of the lamp is 10 ohms. With this information, we can actually calculate the voltage in this circuit. So we're going to calculate the voltage. We set the problem up like this. V is equal to I times R. The voltage is equal to the current, which in this case is 0.2 amperes, times the resistance, which is 10 ohms. And that means that our voltage is 2.2 times 10, and that is going to give us 2 volts. So we know that the voltage in this circuit is 2 volts. That must be a 2 volt cell. So we use that equation, V equals I times R, to calculate the voltage in this simple electric circuit. Let's look at a different problem. In this problem, it's the same circuit only this time we're given different information. We're given the resistance, in this case the lamp has a resistance of 2.5 ohms, and we're given the voltage. The voltage is 6 volts. Now we're going to try to figure out what the current is. In order to do that, we're going to have to rearrange this equation. Now you can use some algebra to solve it, but if you recall, I also at one point in time showed you this interesting little triangle. And if we put this equation into the triangle, remember that the horizontal line here represents division, and the vertical line right here represents multiplication. So this is V equals I times R. It is, in fact, our equation for Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. And we can use this to rearrange this equation. If we're looking for voltage, it's simply V equals I times R. But if we're looking for the current, which we're looking for down here, that gives us a different relationship. Current I is equal to V divided by R. So current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So we set the problem up. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, just like that. So the current is equal to the voltage, in this case it's 6 volts, divided by the resistance, in this case our resistance is 2.5 ohms, there's that Greek letter omega, and when we divide 6 by 2.5 we get a current of 2.4 amperes. And there's our answer. In this circuit, the current is going to be 2.4 amperes. Now let's look at another problem. And again, we're going to have to rearrange this Ohm's law equation. In this circuit, we're given the voltage and we're given the current. We measure the current with an ammeter and we look on the the battery over here, the cell, and it says 12 volts. So we know the voltage, we know the current, and we're going to try to find the resistance. What is the resistance? Resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Resistance R is equal to voltage V divided by I current. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. We can write that down over here. Resistance is equal to voltage V divided by current I. Now we simply 
substitute some numbers. The voltage, 12 volts. The current, well the current from the ammeter is 0.8 amperes. So what is the resistance? We divide 12 by 0.8 and we get a resistance of 15 ohms. And that is how we can use the equation for Ohm's law, V equals I times R, to calculate the voltage, the current, and the resistance in any electrical circuit. And here's what we should understand up to this point. The current flow in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage, but it's inversely proportional to the resistance. We should also remember the equation for Ohm's law, V equals I times R. Voltage equals current times resistance. We should also remember what these two graphs show us. That when we look at the relationship between current and voltage, we know that as the voltage increases, that also causes an increase in the current. If we look at the relationship between current and resistance, we know that as resistance increases, that causes a decrease in the current. Resistance and current are inversely proportional to each other. So let me throw another question at you. It's one that a lot of people think about, especially when they're talking about voltage, current, and resistance. How fast do electrons move in a circuit? And the answer might amaze you. You know, when you walk into a room and you flip a switch, everything in that circuit that's connected to that switch is energized immediately. If you have five lamps in that circuit, they all seem to come on exactly the same time. Does this mean that electrons move at the speed of light so fast that you really can't tell that there's any delay? And the answer is, the answer is no. Electrons actually move quite slowly. They only move about one meter per hour. The reason that everything in that circuit is energized the instant you flip that switch is because that potential difference, that voltage, that electrical force, causes all of the electrons in the circuit to begin moving at exactly the same time. So that's our lesson on Ohm's Law.